Craig, thanks. Dan, I, I, I know there's going to be a lot of questions. I think we should probably go through each of the panelists. That might be my suggestion. Yeah, okay. It's up to you, obviously, but I, that might be my suggestion. Okay, let's proceed on that basis. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Kittick. I'm the Chief of the Water Operations Division for the Central Valley Project in our Central Valley Operations Office for Reclamation. Okay, sorry. Um, I do have a few slides. Um, where will they appear? <laughs> I, I see they're scram they're scrambling about in the oh, back. Okay. I think you're <laughs> okay. This um this is actually part of a presentation that um, is being made right now. We have our water users conference that's uh, taking place up in Reno um, as we speak. And we kind of put these slides together also for that, just to give everyone an update on current water conditions and how we're trying to manage for that. Um, this is just current reservoir storages in the state of California, um, showing the uh, what percentage full they are as a percent of the capacity, which is in the blue, and a percent of the historical pass capacity, which in, is in the red. And as you can see, quite, most of the storages are quite low. From Mr. Chairman, it, describe the uh, colors. That's about all that uh, we can see from this distance. Okay. The. Uh, on the left, the uh, the blue color or the percent of capacity. So you, the storage, the blue line on the column, that's that's the capacity, and below it's a percent of the total capacity and as a percentage of the historical capacity. Blue so, good, non-blue bad. Both bad, actually. Okay. Both <laughs> so, bad. Okay. Yeah, the red line is the is the. Um, the average storage. That's the red horizontal line. Yeah, and most of this information is available on CDEC, so okay. you can zoom in a little closer. Elizabeth, could you generalize and talk about percentage of capacity? Uh, percentage of what it would be normal in a normal season that they are right now. Right. Uh, for example, hmm? Trinity Lake is about 60 percent, 68 percent of the uh, average historical capacity. So, so whereas that's not bad. There's just no snowpack behind it to bring that those storages up. And the same for Shasta. Shasta is about 54% of the historical, average historical capacity. Um, I'll just talk about our reservoirs. Uh, Folsom is 34%. Um, so Folsom, I think, is the most dramatic and has received a lot of attention, of course, because we're right here in Sacramento. Um, most of the reservoirs, Trinity and Shasta right now, the storage is is somewhat stable, meaning our inflow is pretty much matching our outflow. Folsom, even though we're at 400 CFS uh, release, we are still losing losing storage. And um, one of the things that's dictating our release right now is the city of Sacramento and their problems You know, at the treatment plant. They only have the Fairburn plant available. They're having construction done on the, the they install. They're plant. in the process of installing pumps at a lower level somewhere in the river. That's right. They've put in some submersible pumps, but I, those are not enough to um, meet their entire demand. So um, I see us staying at 500 until you know they can get that situation taken care of, and then you know I think we're going to have to consider even lower if we don't see any change uh, in the in the hydrology situation. If the average uh, level of reservoir right now were 34 percent. We were to take no extraordinary measures at all, and there would be no rainfall. How long would it take for those reservoirs to be empty? Uh, we actually did a, a forecast January 1st, based on January 1st conditions, and we, with the, when that, and this was a, a rosy forecast compared to what we're going to see with the February one, and we were able to maintain storage in Folsom above the level of the M and I intakes. 
but as I said, that was January 1, and we're going to have to wait till we see some new numbers, and we'll have to go through that again. I know that in Shasta, at Shasta with our uh, January forecast, we were reaching minimum power pool by September with that forecast. Now, that just means um, we would have to use a lower-level bypass to get the water out of the reservoir for anything beyond that. But I'm expecting with the February 1 forecast, we're going to see things moving forward in time by a month or two months as far as when we're going to hit, you know. But, but if you could generalize, and I won't hold you to the accuracy of this, okay. if you were to take statewide without any rainfall in the next three years and trying to, to, to do things as we have been doing them in the most recent six months, when would they run out? Um, if we don't see any more rainfall, I, I don't, we're not going to make it through the summer. So. That's pretty dire. Yes, very very severe, definitely. Okay. Uh, this is just for CVP storage. Uh, another comparison, 15-year uh, uh, average versus last year and then where we currently are. Um, as you can see, quite a bit uh, reduced from, from even last year. Uh, last year, you know, was a very dry year also, but we went into the year with pretty good storage, and unfortunately this year we're starting with quite low storage. And last year we also did not have much of a snowpack, you know, much of an inflow. So it's just, you know, compounded. This is really probably the third year of, of dryness. Uh, this is, I stuck this slide in here because we, we produce this every day on our on our website, and it's just a good indication of where uh, we currently are in comparison to 1977. So you see uh, the top uh, graph or the top table has the accumulated inflow for the water year to date. So our current, for example, our current uh, 2014 inflow at Shasta 644,000 acre feet, and in uh, 1977. By this date, we had 864, so we are running behind 1977. For all of our reservoirs, except New Malonis, uh, 77, there was zero uh, inflow, and we've got 104. But that's more a reflection of upstream reservoir releases than it is that that, that basin is not in any better shape than any of the other basins. Um, also, precipitation is in the bottom table, and also, again, we're behind uh, 1977, um, 5.34 inches at Shasta to date in 77, and we're at 2.59. So. Uh, this next chart is our, it's called the Eight Station Index. Um, this is also available information on CDEC. Um, it's basically looking at the northern part of the state. There are eight precip stations that are tracked to, um, for daily precip just to see um, where we are on, uh, in comparison to other years. And um, the wettest year is in green. That's the highest line. Below that is the 2005-2006 precipitation. Um, average is the blue area. And then uh, under that is 2012-2013, where you see we were already starting to fall below average. Um, and currently, our current daily precip at, for the 8th station index is 3.5. That's the very bottom line. And that's already falling under the 1976-77 um, precipitation for the aid station. There's also a similar uh, chart that is done for the San Joaquin area. This is the five station index and also very similar situation. Uh, the current daily precip, this was as of the 16th of January, is about uh, three inches and also running under the 76-77. This one I thought was interesting because it's uh, showing the snow water content uh, to date in the, the uh, major Sierra basins and <coughs> up north and the northern Sierra Trinity we've got uh, four percent of, of average 
in the Central Sierra, it's 8 percent, and Southern Sierra, 9 percent, and statewide average is 7 percent of, of average. Those are average of to date or April 1st? These are... I believe it's April 1st. Of April 1st, right. April 1st average. This is a, a very interesting graph that um, is done by the California River, um, California Nevada River Forecast Center. We, we every month we get a an inflow forecast from the Department of Water Resources, but the National Weather Service, the uh, California Nevada River Forecast Center, also does a daily forecast of uh, projected inflows. So what you see, what, this is a compilation for Shasta, uh, the dark blue line. Um, on top, that's the the 50 percent forecast from 2013. Those are the the daily projections, and the light blue line is the 90 percent from 2013. The two lines in red toward the bottom, the upper one is the 50 percent uh, forecast for 2014, and the bottom one is for 2014, the 90 percent. 50% to 90%, that's how confident you are that that's the amount of water you might Six, get? Right, right. And the very top one, which is uh, pink, that's the 10%. So what you see is that the 10% and the 50% are dropping rapidly to meet the 90% numbers. And usually, you know, those will st they will start coming together, you know, closer to April, May. But we're starting to see that they're converging, you know, this this early, and they're converging to a very um, dry projection for inflow for this water year. Uh, the the light blue line, uh, the upper light blue line, is basically your average inflow for Shasta. Um, the blue line below it is uh, what we got in 2013, the actual inflow for 2013. And the dark blue line at the very bottom of the graph is our current uh, 2014 inflows. So. This is a similar projection, but this is for Sh a combination of Shasta, Oroville, Engelbright, and Folsom. So, but telling a very similar story that uh, our 90 and our 50% forecast are dropping rapidly. <coughs> And uh, the, on here, the, the straight line across toward the bottom, that's actually the 1977 annual inflow. And our combined runoff to date is, is that dark blue line toward the bottom. So um, another thing I think this, this shows is that even if we were to get so-called normal precipitation for the rest of the year, it just it won't dig us out of the hole we're in. You know, we would have to have you know, something on the level of what Colorado had the beginning of the year in September, you know, but maybe two or three of those. And this is a similar graph for the uh, major San Joaquin basins. Uh, New Malonis, Don Pedro, New Exchequer, and Friant Reservoir. And as my last slide, I just have this as a 90-day precipitation outlook. Um, let's say it doesn't look good, still predicting uh, below normal precipitation for the next 90 days. Um, Excuse me, Dan, could you see that the uh, members of the council get hard copies of that? We were probably in the worst position in the room to, to see that. Yeah, it's difficult. Sorry uh, and so it lost some of the impact, but we, we certainly have the message. Yeah, as far as um, we are at minimum um, releases on Shasta from Ke uh, Keswick Reservoir, 3250. Um, that isn't a minimum as far as D D1641 uh, State Water Board is concerned. It is a minimum in the uh, biological opinions, the NIMS biological opinion. Um, I think, though, that everything's on the table right now because if we don't have the water in the reservoir to release, we're certainly not going to even be able to meet some of our minimum flows. Um, there are a lot of discussions going on, you know, at higher levels than me, too, just about, you know, what, what we can do, what everyone's going to have to do. So, um, New Malonis, 
um, actually is one in probably the best shape of any of our reservoirs. Uh, New Malonis takes a long time to fill, but once it's full, then it takes a while to empty. So um, we're basically at uh, releasing right now for Vernalis uh, water quality. Our minimum flow is 200 based upon the biological opinion. We're about we're at 350 CFS right now. And uh, we usually see an uptick in salinity at Vernalis in February and March. So these are the months that we usually end up releasing uh, a lot of water for that objective. Um, discussions right now, I don't know what all will be in the temporary urgency change petition. I think we're just taking it um, one month at a time. Um, but I think... In general, you know, all of our contractors are looking at reductions. Uh, that would be our settlement contractors, the exchange contractors down south. Um, when our Shasta, uh, we have our Shasta critical criteria is if our inflow is projected to be under 3.2 million acre feet, and we're definitely there in both the 90 and the 50 percent forecast. Um, so, uh, according to the contracts, um, our settlement contractors would. Uh, be subject to a 75% reduction, as well as the refuge would be um, also 75% uh, reduction. At Jones Pumping Plant, uh, right now we're at zero pumping. We've had an outage at O'Neill, but we're coming back on on Sunday. We'll just have uh, one unit. And the state, between us, we're at 1,500 CFS combined. And we're hoping we can even, you know, keep that up with, with the available inflow into the delta. Okay. Any questions? This, this, shortage, me, sorry. Go ahead. this shortage of water supply, according, if you listen to the commotion publicly uh, being reported, is so draconian and so extreme that no one could have predicted it. It's never happened before in history, and therefore nobody could have anticipated it. True? or false? I would say yes, we're in uncharted territory. I mean, it's very difficult, I know, for even the um, National Weather Service and for DWR to do these inflow forecasts because um, they don't have any snow for a snow survey. They're, they're using historical uh, information, and this is just off the charts historically also. So when, you say, when you say off the chart, the, so... The drought of 2007, 2009 was inconsequential compared to this one? Compared to this one, yes. And the drought of 77 to 79 was also inconsequential compared to this one? Well, uh, i say it's most similar to probably the 77 drought, so we do have numbers from that. But well, what, seen... what, I'm, what I'm getting at, just based on your professional experience, we, we seem to be directly conscious of a drought when we're in the middle of it blissfully ignorant before it happens and incapable of systematically after it ends doing anything to do much of anything to minimize the ability to respond when the next one comes around mm -hmm. any great answers from the federal government that we should know about i think everyone tends to be optimistic and think you know but that's we'll that's the rain, that, yeah. but that's the politically yeah. easiest attitude to maintain because it says oh yeah everybody will, everybody will get water don't worry about it uh, and you know as an ex politician I suppose maybe even I was guilty of saying that mm -hmm. but the historical evidence shows that that is really dumb d u m b as an attitude even if I said it. Mm -hmm. uh, what, you're a professional water manager. You have these pressures all the time. How do you, prevent, how do you maintain storage in water facilities at a, re, at a reasonable level when the expectation of water users is, hey, I want all that water available for whatever I want to do year-round, and I want to have more if the price is cheaper through the storage facility than pumping underground water? I mean, those are the conscious decisions that go on. How do you balance the interests? It's very difficult, I'll say, we, because we get pressure, as you say, from, from our water contractors or from fishery agencies, and I think people, you know, they see the water in the reservoir and they want it now because next year, you know, we'll, there's a good chance we'll get 
more rain will get inflow, we'll just fill them up again. And I think it's very hard for some, you know, we're in the third year of this. If, you know, two years ago it would have been hard to say, no, we can't give you more allocation or we can't release more down the river for the fish because we might need that in two years. That, you know, it's very difficult to convince people that, because we don't know, some, you know, it could change. We could get a whole slew of rain in February. We could have another miracle march. When we will have the flood and emergency response people sitting at this table talking yeah. about what all the problems are from flooding. Um, yeah. that, that, that so, so, Mr. Chairman, it, it, remind, Chairman. it reminds me um, when the legislature looked at pensions for teachers that were inadequate and we looked at uh, <clears throat> at uh, yields um, to the uh, funds and stirs and increase the pensions without increasing the contributions right and uh, now that's part of the <clears throat> accumulated debt that the governor cited yesterday but at the time we looked at a pretty rosy picture and we made decisions that were very popular so Elizabeth, you're off the hook because the, the oh, pension too. situation might be equally bad. <laughs> Tom, and then uh, and then we'll cycle back for some questions. May I have my slide, please? Hi, I'm Tom Goring. I'm executive director of the Sacramento Water Forum. And um, is that better? Is that better? Close. That's not that's not me. That's the Tijuana Brass. 